Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Vibs here from SlideNode. In the previous two videos, I was talking about the touch framework lifecycle in Android. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can handle the touch event inside your custom view with the help of the on touch event method and the lifecycle that we discussed previously. Now, in the last two videos, there were certain guys who commented and said, Hey Vibs, what's this? Why do we need to learn this? Now here is the thing, if you plan to use an on item touch listener to handle the click of a recycler view outside the adapter that is inside your activity or fragment, then you need to understand how the life cycle works because the recycler view is basically a view group. It has children inside it. When you click on the children, you don't want the event to be forwarded to them. Rather, you're going to use the on intercepted touch event of the recycler view to handle that event within it. So enough said. We'll talk about it in the, list, in, the, in the upcoming videos when I actually show you the recycler views on item touch listener and how it looks. In this video, let's focus on certain things at hand first. Now let's see how the life cycle is affected when we indicate that my view is interested in processing the touch event. All you gotta do is go here and just tap it once. And as you can see, a lot of methods are being called here. Let's take a look and try to understand the life cycle now. As you remember from our previous video, the first method to be triggered is the dispatch touch event, which is going to go here, print the log statement that you see here on the screen, and then it's going to go to the super implementation at this point. Now, super implementation is going to merely jump to my layout. It's going to call the dispatch touch event inside my layout here, and it's going to print the same statement for the action down, which is exactly what you see in the my layout dispatch touch event down. It's going to call the super implementation at the bottom, which is going to jump to the on intercepted touch event here. You get a chance to decide whether your layout wants to handle the touch event or whether your view should handle the touch event. If you want your layout to handle the touch event, just return true from here, otherwise return false. I've called the super implementation at the bottom, which by default returns false. So things are gonna jump to our my view here. And as you can see, that's exactly what happens. The views dispatch touch event action down is triggered over here. So at this point, this is going to call the super implementation again, which is going to jump to the on touch event of our view, which is exactly what you see over here. Now remember, inside the on touch event, I have called the super implementation. Yes, it returns false by default, but I have returned true here to indicate that my view is interested in processing the action underscore down event. So this simply changes a lot of things in the life cycle. This in, in me means that your my view is interested in doing the things out there. So at this point, control is going to return back to the dispatch touch event because if you remember, we executed the super dot dispatch touch event after which the on touch event was called. So things are going to run at this line currently over here, which is exactly what you see where view dispatch touch event returns true now. Take a look at that. Now, if you go back, things are going to jump above further. It's going to go back to the layout here inside the layout. The control is going to go all the way back to this line because if you remember all this time we were simply executing super dot dispatch touch event now the next line will be executed which is again going to return true here indicating that our view has consumed the touch event out there things will jump backward to the sub activity now where this statement is going to run where the activities dispatch touch event is going to return true indicating that the view was consumed now notice carefully that the on touch event is no longer called for the activity because our my view has its on touch event where it's running true indicating that things are processed over here and not inside the activity so that's why in the first video we talked about the on touch event being the last method to be called when we process stuff out there now when you talk about a move event when i move my finger out there the next event that is triggered in the activities of dispatch touch event move it's going to follow the same sequence of operations it's going to go there from there to the layout dispatch touch event from there the on intercepted it's going to return false so things are going to jump down to the views dispatch touch event where the views on touch event will be called thanks to the super implementation but we return true here indicating that we are interested in processing the action underscore move event out here and therefore things are going to jump back and they are going to return true to the layout for the activity and then each and every single event that you see is going to follow the same cycle out there so this is what happens when you're interested in processing an event inside the view now being a person who's exploratory in nature when it comes to programming i also tried something new out here 
So inside the dispatch touch event for our sub activity, I simply avoided calling a super implementation and I returned false here. So at this point, if you go to our my view and if you just tap it, you will see that the activities dispatch touch event is the only method that's getting triggered with all the appropriate events out there. It's not forwarding the request to the layout or the view and it's not calling on touch event either. So from this, I conclude that you have to call the super dot dispatch touch event out here. Otherwise, you're not going to forward that event anywhere. Now, the one other thing that I tried out was to call the super implementation, which is actually going to return false by default. But instead, I returned it true over here inside the activities dispatch touch event. And when you tap on the button or the text view that we have, so what happens is the same set of events that repeat themselves out here. Now, I would like to know from you guys what do you think about this. If you return false from the dispatch touch event or if you return true from there, how things are actually affected because I could not see any difference in the log cat whether I return true or false here from my dispatch touch event in the activity. Now, let's talk about the second case. In this case, when I click on the view or when I tap on the view here, I want the event to be captured by the layout that is our custom layout, not by this my view. How can I do this? Very simple. We go first to our my view and inside the on touch event where we initially returned true here to indicate that our view was handling it, we simply return false. And that is done with a super dot blah 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 which by default returns false over here. If you go back to my layout here, we need to make some changes here. Now when you know very well that there's the on intercept touch event here, if you return true, it means that you are interested in processing this event inside your layout and that's exactly what we do. We remove the default implementation or for here I just commented it out and I'm going to return true here from this method. Now what's going to happen at this point this event is not going to be forwarded to your my view anymore. In other words when the dispatch touch event is called it's going to go to the super implementation here. It's going to jump to the on intercepted touch event here but since we return true here it's going to go to the on touch event here inside my layout.java. It's not going to go to my views dispatch touch event. And here inside the on touch event, depending on whether you handled it or not, you can return true or false. Initially, I have put the default values here by calling the super implementation, which is going to return false here, giving the activity a chance to perform the processing. Let's take a look at this in action here. I go and simply tap on my view. And take a look at the flow of events. The first place everything starts is the activities dispatch touch event, which is triggering out. It jumps to the layouts or dispatch touch event here at the top. And inside the layouts dispatch touch event, we have called the super implementation, which is going to jump to the on intercept touch event, which is exactly what you see in this statement here when this log statement runs in the first case. Now, at the bottom here, I have written true, and that's exactly what is printed out here. And notice how the flow has changed now. It doesn't go to the my view anymore. It simply jumps to the on touch event of your layout now where this event is fired which is my layout on touch event down which you see over here. At the bottom the super implementation is returned which returns false by default which is exactly what you see here. And this simply means that your layout did not handle the touch event inside itself. So things are going to be forwarded back up. In other words, this at this point, this statement has completed executing, which is the super dot dispatch touch event. So the next line is going to run now and it's going to print false, which is exactly what you see here. And since the layout did not intercept the touch event, things are going to be forwarded back to its parent, which is the activity. So in the activity, the on touch event will be triggered here where the first statement is going to run printing the on touch down over here. And at the bottom, we have called the super implementation, which is going to return false. And that's exactly what you see here in the next line. Now, at this point, the activities super dot dispatch touch event has completed executing. And the next statement runs returning false, indicating that no one has processed that event. Now, notice very carefully at this point, Android knows that it forwarded the event to the layout. The layout did not process that event because it returned false from the on touch event. So now, the whole process of forwarding the event to the layout is skipped. In other words, when the move event is triggered, activity is not going to forward that to my layout. Rather, it's going to jump directly to the on touch event to the move, which is this statement executing in case B, which is exactly what you see here. At this point, again, we return false from here. 
which means the dispatch is also going to return false which you see here and the up event is again going to be processed in the same way so up the on touch is going to be called the on touch will return false the dispatch will return false now let's talk about the case where the layout will actually process the touch event all the change that you need to do is go inside the on touch event of your layout and return a true here instead of the default super behavior which is going to return false over there so with this if we click the view just tap on it what you see here at the bottom is something like this the activities dispatch touch even triggered the layout is going to be triggered the on intercepted will be triggered it returns true because you have indicated that you are interested in processing the touch event inside the layout so at this point things are not going to be forwarded to your view rather the on touch event is going to be called for your layout where again this statement will run which is exactly what you see here the layout on touch event down here and then at the bottom when you return true here it means that you have successfully processed that event inside your layout now at this point what's going to happen is that the dispatch touch event at the top it's a super implementation will successfully execute and the next line will run here and it will return true indicating that your layout actually processed the touch event things are going to jump back to the activity where the super of the dispatch will finish executing and this statement will run here which will again return true which is why activities dispatch touch event returns true over here and that completes the cycle notice that the on touch event for the activity won't be called because the layout called its on touch event indicating that it has processed the touch event successfully at this point android framework recognizes that your layout is interested in processing the touch events instead of your activities so things are going to be forwarded there the next time in other words the dispatch touch event for the action move is going to go to the dispatch touch event of the layout and from there there is no call to on intercept touch event rather things jump directly to the on touch event of your layout here at the bottom where the action move is triggered and this again returns true which means the dispatch touch event for the layout has completed executing and you see this statement run here that returns true from there things jump back to the activity where the super has successfully executed therefore the next statement runs for the dispatch touch event in the activity which is exactly what you see here and the same sequence of events repeat for anything out there now the one interesting thing to note here is that the on intercept touch event for your layout is called only the very first time that you return true here in other words if you're processing the touch event inside your layout and you return true from the on touch event then the on intercept touch event is not called for the subsequent touches out there take a look at this the move doesn't call it the up doesn't call it and this concludes some very important things about how the framework skips steps which are familiar all the time so if you have seen this video completely and the previous two videos as well i assume at this point that you have a very good understanding of how the touch life cycle works in android and this was a pretty advanced topic and if you're going to research online you won't find much on this except chinese blogs that can talk about it so there are people on stack overflow as well who are struggling and there is no proper answer if you guys find such people be sure to tell them about this video you'll be making up some new friends in that process so with this i have covered how you can handle touch events inside a layout and a view there are two certain things that are remaining before i completely wrap this off and move to the recycler view one of them is how you can intercept the touch events on the layout and prevent certain events from reaching the child the other one is how you can block the interception of touch events from the child using the request disallow on intercept touch event which is an advanced technique which i'll be discussing in my next video in the meantime if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day